John Spencer joins us once again. Good to see you, John. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. Uh, first, what is the good answer to why you leave American troops in the region right now uh, when they are target practice for bad guys? Um, because nobody's going to scare the American forces. We're there at invitation of those countries to fight an evil that, like we see in Gaza right now, ISIS. And you're not going to scare us away in past mistakes the Americans made when they lose American soldiers and completely leave a region to its will. I mean, it's crazy to think, like, we don't have a problem killing Iran's proxies if that's what Iran wants to do. But I agree with you that continuing the status quo clearly isn't working. It isn't working in Israel, and it isn't working in the Middle East. All right, so second question. We're obviously not taking it to Iran in any way that is demonstrable to the people outside the Pentagon uh, and maybe some select government agencies that are dealing with um, trade restrictions, et cetera, embargoes, those kinds of things. But um, what else could be done and what can't you do? Well, the problem with proxies, Iran, the global exporter of terrorism, like, like I lost soldiers in 2008 in Iraq to Iran proxies. Like, it's not unknown, but there's plausible deniability. Like, oh, that's not me. And then, so you have to use other forms of national power to try to suppress Iran's behavior. But it's not working, so you have to do something. Yes, we can, we can kill all those attacking, those 75 attacks. We can strike back. We can kill the proxies. But there has to be national-level leadership to change the approach that isn't working with Iran. What could be done that isn't being done? Uh, sanction them to the Stone Ages. I mean, but it's not that easy, right? This is national politics. Uh, more partners in the Middle East is, is a big part of this. There is a, a coalition of people that Iran forces this evil onto all across. And this is why we're there, right? This isn't just because of ISIS. We're there for diplomatic relations, mill to mill, military to military relationships. I don't have the solutions or I'd probably make a lot more money, but I know what we're doing isn't working. Um, another problem for sanctions that we've learned is often you wind up starving the wrong people um, because especially in this corrupt regime that's in Iran right now under the guise of, uh, you know, being religious, uh, they starve their own people and find ways to take the money for themselves. So that's a problem with sanctions. All right. Next issue. Um, Israel is consistently losing the optics war, okay? They're big and mighty. They're pounding all these people who seem unarmed. There seem to be dead kids all over the place all the time. People uh, are increasingly, especially in America, saying it's too much. It is beyond the line of self-defense. It is beyond the line of any idea of proportionality. What are the rules and what is your assessment of the state of play? Yeah, so the, the, rules are, the rules are very clear, and actually Israel follows more rules than any other military I've ever seen in this type of warfare. They go above and beyond. For Lord's sake, they're handing out their maps to the civilians of their military um, to better tell them, the civilians where to go to get out of the harm's way, which also go to the, the bad guys, to Hamas, to move out of those areas. The rules are is that you have, to, you have to prevent civilian harm. You have to do everything reasonable. But it isn't that you don't go into those areas. If that was the case, the whole world would go into chaos. Every time ISIS or any other al-Qaeda, you name the bad guy, could seize the population and nobody could do anything about it. That's why this is really the test of the Western way of warfare is Israel is following all the rules on when to go to war and how to execute the war. But the world is trying to say, well, it's still, it's, you should still stop. Too many dead kids. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, you're, the, the problem with fighting these terrorists is that they're not a conventional force. They're not going to come and fight you. You know, it's interesting as a historian also and a tactical expert, people keep comparing Hamas to America back during the rebellion from England. And that, well, this is what we did. Uh, it was guerrilla warfare. It's a very different between hiding around people and using kids as shields, let alone what they did on October 7th, and trying to take on a superior force by using different tactics. How do you see it? I think anybody who's dumb enough to say something like that should be forced to watch that movie, the horror film that I did on this morning of October 7th, and compare the American Revolution to literally cutting people's heads off their heads and, and taking them as trophies, killing babies, uh, literally... It, it's so hard to comprehend, Chris, that somebody would think that way. 
is it really they're that dumb? Is it a crisis in our education system? Or they, or do they have an agenda? If you're pro Hamas, you're like pro evil. What I saw this morning in 45 minutes of a truck, and it's just one tenth, I mean, just one fraction of what they did was like, it's a thousand Jeffrey Dahmers. That's who you're voting for. You're voting for Jeffrey Why don't Dahmer. They hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.